This bottle contains a disinfectant lotion made with cyanide. It has that odor of bitter almond that's so characteristic of this poison. Nichols swallows the cyanide, a quick-acting poison smelling of bitter almond. This poor beast is suffocating. seem to be breathing better. While cutting up Barbicane's hat, I found a letter signed Diana in the lining. It must be confidential if my friend took the trouble to hide it this way. Let's take a look. Sir, I will not seek any other excuse for my behavior than my passionate desire to visit the moon and to meet its inhabitants who I know for a fact exist. When it turned out that such a journey was possible, I would have given my all to participate. Nothing else was important in my eyes. Yes. I dreamed that you would love me, and that I would go with you to the moon. When I realized this was an illusion, I tried, out of spite, to seduce Captain Nickel. I wanted him to hide me in the shell, a stowaway. But Nickel proved as stubborn as you, and I was left alone with nothing but my shame. I do hope that you will pardon me, and beg of you to keep this confession secret, as it would utterly destroy my reputation were it to fall into the wrong hands. Farewell, sir. And when you are on the moon, please think kindly of one who would so love to have accompanied you. So, this Diana tried to seduce Barbicane, then Nickel, in the hope of taking off for the moon? Poor girl. The hearts of human beings are sometimes moved by strange passions. The hypothesis of a quarrel provoked by a woman doesn't resist serious examination. A letter concealed in Barbicane's hat clearly demonstrates that Diana's advances were firmly refused by both men. What do you know? Traces on the glasses show that Barbicane and Nickel served themselves a drink. Barbicane and Nickel toast each other. Judging by the smell of it, this glass contains some very fine wine. I'd better not touch this glass. I can smell a suspect bitterness mixed with the bouquet of the wine. attracts Ardon's attention. The explosion of a meteor reveals the hidden face of the moon. The meteor's passage has altered the shell's trajectory. At last, the projectile begins its descent to the lunar surface. Barbicane decides to die by gunshot. Nickel threw poison. The two men offer themselves a last drink. Nickel pours cyanide into his glass. It's understood that Nickel will shoot Barbicane before lying down himself to wait for the poison to take effect. The sequence of events is entirely reconstructed. Michel Ardant has closed his investigation. To land successfully, I have to ignite my retro rockets. With a bit of string, I could tie this blanket around my friend to serve as a shroud. Then I could abandon his body in the vacuum of space. If the ocean serves as a sailor's grave, it's only fitting that space be the tomb of an interplanetary traveler. Well, now I can throw the body into space. I can't keep the window open for long, or the capsule will lose all its air. 
Michel Ardant sends his friend's body into interplanetary space. Smash this barrel to open it. The shell is falling much too fast. It's overloaded. I've got to lighten her up. successfully lowered his speed. He sets down in the middle of the mountains in a sirp where the ground is covered with a strange blue snow. The shell slides and rolls down the slope of a glacier. This uncomfortable descent luckily comes to a halt just on the brink of a precipice. Outside all is dark and quiet. It's still night at the foot of this mountain range Lunar dawn will soon break. Ardan opens the door of the shell, closes it again right away. There's no air outside. So, does the moon not have an atmosphere? Ardan can't believe it. He didn't take a long trip like this to stay cooped up in an aluminum prison. But now the first rays of the sun arrive at the foot of the mountains. The blue snow starts to melt. For that matter, is it really snow that's boiling this way? No, it's solidified air which is defrosting in the heat of the day. While the atmosphere covers the ground with a denser and denser cloak, vegetation sprouts and grows at an extraordinary speed. I should be able to go out now. Hooray! The moon is mine. 
I think I'll explore this crater where chance has cast me. Then I'll try to climb the surrounding mountains. Incredible brightly colored plants, diffuse light, pungent odors. What a vision! This is stranger than any poet's wildest dream. This is the stone that stopped my shell right at the edge of the precipice. It looks as if it were sculpted. Could there be intelligent life on the moon? What's that I hear? An insect? Where did that blasted bug go? I can't hear it anymore. <laughs> 